So do you like the McDonald's fries or? Oh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just too busy slacking off and ignoring an obvious problem with our products, but we can do that here at Nintendo since everyone's gonna buy everything anyway. Hey, we're about to decide what 10 year old game we're gonna severely overprice next. Oh, hell yeah. Joy-Cons at their announcement seem to be the next iteration of the Wiimote in a way, with a lot of features from it returning, but also a lot of features being added. Granted, most of them are rarely used in any games released today, such as HD Rumble and the IR motion camera, and they just ended up being novel concepts to push units at the beginning of the console's life cycle. One thing that was hugely different from the Wiimote with Joy-Cons, however, was the addition of the two joysticks for each pair of them. Obviously, this would be a very welcome addition if that wasn't where the biggest issues with Joy-Con arise. Joy-Con Drift, which has by far been the main complaint from the majority of Nintendo Switch owners since its launch, has yet to have been remedied after over four years of the console being on the market. Today, we're going to be trying to make sense of why these controllers even behave in a way to cause drift, what efforts have been made by consumers to fix them, and why Nintendo is acting like it simply doesn't exist. Let's talk about it. Joy-Con Drift is something we all know about, and most of us have even experienced ourselves, but if you don't happen to know what drift is, let me explain it to you real quick. Whenever a controller is considered to be drifting, it means that it is sending inputs to the game console that aren't actually being inputted in real life. These are most commonly known as phantom inputs, implying that the button is being pressed by a phantom or ghostly presence, since it is never actually being physically pressed in the real world. This can also happen for joysticks as well, which, while drifting, can give directional inputs without the stick ever moving at all. If you've never experienced this yourself, you can only imagine how annoying it can be to have the controller input things that you never inputted yourself. The large majority of Switch users have reported having drift to some extent with at least one of their Joy-Cons, and a lot of people who have Pro Controllers, including myself, have experienced the same problem with them as well. However, the most prominent component of drifting seems to be the left Joy-Con, specifically the joystick. This is by far the worst input to malfunction too, considering the fact that it most commonly is used to, well, you know, move around. But like I said, that's not the only part of the controller that has been reported to drift. Obviously some, but not as many, have reported their right stick drifting, which controls the camera in a lot of games. Additionally, and I'm not sure if this is related to drift or not, I personally have experienced extreme input lag with a lot of the buttons on both my Joy-Con and Pro Controller at certain times. In even more extreme cases, the controller will just completely ignore inputs I make, such as simply just not registering that I pressed the jump button so I in turn just end up running straight off a cliff to my death. My best guess is that these issues specifically are from the Switch's other problem with horrible Bluetooth stability, but that's a whole other thing. Regardless, if you are one of the few people who have never experienced drift in your controllers, consider yourself lucky. Myself and many others are envious of your good fortune. The drifting issue has only seemed to worsen as time goes on, with many reporting their drift getting so bad that they are no longer able to play the games at all with those specific controllers. The question is though, what is causing the drift in the first place? Obviously, there has to be some kind of fault in the manufacturing process of the controllers. It seems to happen on nearly every single one, so there is something being overlooked when these things are getting made. Many people have actually taken apart their Joy-Cons in an attempt to answer this exact question. After inspection of the insides of the controllers, the general consensus is that basically, Joy-Cons are made with low quality parts that wear down and break easily. Their autopsy revealed that many of the contacts for buttons and joysticks were worn down even after just a few months of use. I shouldn't be surprised though, Joy-Cons literally just feel cheap to hold in your hand. I genuinely think if someone clenches their fist hard enough, the Joy-Con would just snap in half. What's really bewildering though, is the fact that they have the audacity to charge 80 US dollars for a pair of these, and unless you happen to have the hands of a 9 year old, you're going to get cramps if you play with them for too long. Another theory however, is that sometimes drift can simply be caused by dirt and dust getting under the joysticks, and can easily be fixed by blowing compressed air under them or by cleaning them with some isopropyl alcohol. This seems to only work as a fix for some people though, so it also may suggest that there are multiple causes for drift, and not just one culprit in the issue. Either way, once your controllers start drifting to the point of no return, there's really no use for them. I'm using mine to level out my desk. 
Anyone would say that a controller that is rendered useless after such a short amount of time is completely unacceptable. There is some amount of hope, however, for those willing to take the risk. It is possible to potentially repair controllers and get rid of drift, but it includes taking the controller apart. Taking apart a controller is definitely something that not everyone is comfortable with doing, especially considering how expensive they are. If you mess up once during the repair process, you may ruin your controller, and then you're really screwed. Surprisingly though, in July of 2019, Nintendo very quietly announced that they would be fixing all Joy-Con controllers with drift, regardless of warranty and free of charge. And I know, you're probably wondering why I haven't already mentioned this. Well, it's because these repairs also happen to be mere temporary fixes. I personally sent my Joy-Con into Nintendo around that same time to get them repaired. It took me three weeks to get them back after I shipped them, and sure enough, the drift appeared to be gone. But as you may have guessed, a few months went by and it returned once again. At that point, I was completely convinced that they are literally just using cheap and weak parts to make and repair these controllers, like I mentioned earlier. So am I just supposed to give up my Joy-Con for three whole weeks every time they decide to start drifting? That doesn't sound very convenient to me. I paid good money for these hunks of plastic junk. Also, keep in mind that before July of 2019, they were actually charging for the repair of this fault in their product. Some people reported paying up to $40 for repair of their Joy-Con that were out of warranty. That means you pay half the original price for them to only work for a few more months. What kind of solution is that supposed to be? God damn it! I know so many people have already voiced their complaints about this problem, but it still baffles me how Nintendo manages to get away with it. I guess it's because everyone just buys the products anyway because they're addicted to Nintendo like it's a drug. Yes, I am describing myself. What's most surprising about this whole situation though, is how Nintendo has decided to turn a blind eye to any and all complaints from customers claiming that their controllers were having problems. At one point, Nintendo even denied that drift was even an issue at all, but I'll go further into that in a bit. Even today, you can go onto any social media platform and search up Joy-Con Drift and see thousands of videos of people showing their personal experiences with the issue. Like I said though, Nintendo seems to be entirely ignoring this obvious evidence. Hey, I'm having a problem with my controller. Believe it or not though, there actually has been one time where Nintendo acknowledged and responded to Drift complaints. It was in a public statement made by one of the representatives around the time when Drift was becoming a big topic. And wow, you do not have to worry anymore guys, this statement solves all the problems. Just listen to this. At Nintendo, we take great pride in creating quality products and we are continuously making improvements to them. We are aware of recent reports that some Joy-Con controllers are not responding correctly. We want our consumers to have fun with Nintendo Switch, and if anything falls short of this goal, we always encourage them to visit support.nintendo.com so we can help. This is just yet another brain dead and tone deaf corporate response that literally doesn't solve anything. I've talked about these types of statements before and I really don't see the purpose for them. If you're not going to make a statement to actually help solve the problem instead of just pissing people off, then don't make a statement at all! That's it. Gah. However, it has surfaced over the previous months that multiple groups and individuals from all over the globe have attempted to sue Nintendo through the filing of class action lawsuits against them relating to Joy-Con Drift. For many of these suits, you can actually still claim that you are also experiencing drift by filling out a form to show your concern. But none of these lawsuits have seemed to produce anything of benefit for the consumer just yet, and most did not make it far at all before being shut down. In fact, as I mentioned earlier, Nintendo's legal team's response to one of these suits was to claim that Joy-Con drift, and I quote, isn't a real problem and hasn't caused anyone any inconvenience which was literally contradictory to their original public statement asking customers to contact their support. This is, however, a very common legal tactic in situations like this in order to cover up their wrongdoings. Regardless, Nintendo is a huge corporation, the biggest one in Japan actually, and this means that they have a huge team of really good lawyers at their disposal. It's highly unlikely that any one of us measly consumers is going to stand a chance against them. The law is a very complicated thing that they understand and that most of us don't. But I truly hope that one of the class action suits made by the public can accomplish something eventually. We all know that there's power in numbers, so maybe, just maybe, one day our constant pestering and complaining will get this issue taken care of. Can I interest you in a $50 doorstop? <laughs>